Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about one of the most important tools of recombinant DNA technology and that is vector. This is subtopic of biotechnology principle and processes which has been given in NCRT book biology class 12 under unit 9 and the chapter number is 11. Before discussing about vector, it's important to recap a little about what is biotechnology. So let's start. Biotechnology, it can be defined as a technology which is used in biology. It is a technology which is used in biology. And the objective of using technology in biology is to increase the yield of agriculture, medicine, food, etc. We can also define biotechnology as a technique in which living organisms are used to produce products which are useful to human being. That is biotechnology. And the term biotechnology was given by Carl Rieke. In the biotechnology, there is manipulation of genes. And that's why it is also called DNA manipulation technology, recombinant DNA te technology or genetic engineering. In this chapter, you are going to study about components of gene cloning and components of gene cloning includes DNA manipulation enzyme, vectors and the hosts. And the, in the later part, you will study about PCR that is polymerase chain reaction. So question arises here, what is gene cloning? What do you understand by gene cloning? Gene cloning means making multiple copies of genes. We can understand this uh, with uh, an example of mobile phone. In the market, you can see a particular model of mobile phone. For example, just take uh, iPhone 11. You can see same mobile is available all over the world. So how is possible because the company that is the Apple company it is using same features and technology to make the multiple copies of iPhone 11. So we can say that these all mobiles are cloned. Similarly in the field of in biotechnology here that the multiple copies of gene are made and that is gene cloning. Let's understand with one more example so this is a fragment of DNA and we want to make multiple copies of this particular fragment for that it has to be linked with a vector and here the vector is a plasmid so using the restriction enzyme we cut the vector genome and at that point that the fragment of DNA is linked so when this plasmid, it replicates along with the plasmid, this particular fragment of DNA, DNA also gets replicated and we get the multiple copies of the this particular DNA. This is gene cloning. Here I am referring one more example. This is a fragment of DNA and which has a gene which encodes for insulin. Insulin, you know what is the function. First, the most important function that it converts glucose into glycogen. And apart from this, it is used in the therapeutic use in a people who are suffering from diabetes. So this is the function of insulin. So if this fragment of DNA, if it is introduced into the E. coli, E. coli will start producing insulin. How it is done? This fragment of DNA, it is linked with the competent vector and then it is introduced into the E. coli. Here, after that E. coli, that it turns into genetically modified and start producing insulin. So, for making any organism genetically modified, we need following steps. First, we have to identify the DNA with desirable gene. For example, here, this is the gene, this fragment has a gene which encodes for insulin. So, we here, we have identified the gene. 
next is introduction into the host so here that it has been introduced into the e coli and the third point the maintenance of the introduced in dna in the host and transfer of the dna to progeny whatever the in genome has been introduced into the host cell it should be maintained and apart from that when this e coli multiply it the genome should be transferred to the progeny here if i tell you to define what is recombinant dna technology how you will define it's simple it is the joining of here you can see this is the this fragment of dna it's a human dna and it is linked with the vector that is the here plasmid so here the joining of dna molecules of different organisms and then it is transferred to the host cell to produce organism with new genetic combination and that is called recombinant dna technology so for recombinant dna technology there are certain tools so we will see what are the tools for recombinant dna technology so the first tool that is dna manipulating enzyme the first one is restriction enzyme restriction enzyme is also referred as biological knives DNA polymerase it helps in the synthesis of DNA strand and DNA ligase that is another enzyme it links the DNA fragments the second tools of recombinant DNA technology that is vectors which we are going to study in this video in detail and the third one is the competent host so in which the desired gene will be transferred so let's start with the vector vectors are vehicles or carriers which transfer the desired genome or gene of interest into the host cell the common vectors are bacteriophages plasmids bac which stands for bacterial artificial chromosome yac that is yeast artificial chromosomes ti plasmid of agrobacterium tumefaciens first we will learn about the bacteriophage so bacteriophages are the viruses which infect bacteria they can multiply in large number within the host cell and their multiplication it is independent of chromosomal dna an important point is that here it can accept large piece of foreign dna we will see the what are the types of phages used as a vector so the first one is lambda phage vector and these vector allows cloning of dna fragment up to the size of 23 kilo base length and 1 kilo base equals to 1000 nucleotide long base so this is important now the next one is that is m13 m13 phage vector this is filamentous phage and it infects e coli so this was about the bacteriophage now about the plasmids plasmids are also one of the important vectors used in genetic engineering it's a extra chromosomal dna and it is double stranded and it doesn't contain histone protein and its replication is also independent of the chromos chromosomal dna apart from this it doesn't have important role in the growth and the vital function of the cell examples of plasmids are pbr322 and puc8 plasmid was discovered by william hay and joshua lederberg so here you can see two pbr322 and puc8 that these are the genetically engineered plasmids pbr why the name pbr has been given pbr means p stands for plasmid b stands for polymer and 
R stands for Rodriguez. They designed this plasmid. That's why its name is PBR. And what this numeral indicates? So 322, it indicates the serial number of the plasmid. 322 number, it, it is the number given to the plasmid and it distinguishes the this plasmid from the other plasmids developed in the laboratory. In this PBR322, it has two genes and which encodes for tetracycline resistance and the ampicillin resistance. Now about the PUC8, it has a gene that is LAGZ gene and which encodes for an enzyme that is galactosidase. This is about the plasmid. Now the next vector that is a TI plasmid of Agrobacterium tumefaciens. It is used as one of the vectors and here this, these bacteria, they are the pathogens of the dicot plant. They get into, they introduces their TI plasmid through the injury which occurs into the dicot plants and there they cause tumor and that is called crown gall. This plasmid that is the TI plasmid, the trans, this is tumor induced plasmid, they are modified and used as a vector to introduce desired gene into two varieties of plants. Here essential features of vectors means what are the characteristic a vector is having to be a competent vehicle. So the first under that is the origin of replication. In short it is called ORI. O -R -I. So sir so let here suppose this is a plasmid. This is a plasmid and at this point here at this point there is a sequence this is called ORI. What, so what is ORI? ORI is a sequence where the replication starts. Usually in prokaryotes single ORI is present. In eukaryotes many ORI are present. Suppose if we simply this is the fragment of DNA and this is the host cell. If we simply transfer the fragment of DNA into the host cell, whether it will, start, it will start replicating, it is not possible unless it becomes the part of the genome of the host cell. So here, if a piece of desired or alien DNA is linked to this sequence, then it will also start replicating along with the genome of the host cell. And apart from replication, it also controls the number of copy of the linked DNA. If we want to make more copy of the DNA, then we have to select which origin of replication supports large number of copies. So this is one feature. The second feature that is selectable markers actually genes which encodes resistance to antibiotics like canamycin, ampicillin, tetracycline, chloramphenicol, etc. And it helps in the selection and identification of the transformants. What is process of transformation? Transformation we can explain as introduction of desired gene into the host cell that is called transformation. By selectable markers we can identify that whether the host cell is having this vector and that is selectable marker but normally E. coli don't carry any resistance against any of these antibiotics so here you can see the we can see in the diagram this is plasmid these are the two genes which provides resistance to the ampicillin and the tetracycline so this is selectable marker the third important feature a vector should have that is cloning site. If we want to link any foreign DNA or desired DNA or alien DNA, recognition site should be present in the vector where restriction enzyme is used. For this, we will use this diagram of PBR 
322 you can see here in here this is the location of tetracycline resistance gene and here one recognition site that is BAMH1 is there where the restriction enzyme works and at this point that the foreign gene will be linked in here the MP slain gene you, are, you can see here two recognition sites are there that is P, PVU1 and PST1 there restriction enzyme will work and the alien gene will be linked to this site now if we link alien gene at this site what will happen the plasmid will lose resistance to tetracycline if we link a gene at this site what will happen plasmid will lose its resistance to the tetracycline and but still but it is still useful in selection of recombinants and non recombinants when this transformants they are placed on the mp slain containing agar plate so suppose this is mp slain containing agar plate what will happen here that since it has not lost resistance to the MP slain. All the transformants and non transformants they all will grow on MP slain containing agar plate. And after this, when it is transferred to the tetracycline, here that is MP slain containing plate, and this is tetracycline containing agar plate, then what will happen? Only non recombinants will grow here but still it is a cumbersome process because simultaneously we need two plates that is ampicillin containing plate and tetracycline containing plate so just to make it more easier that other selectable marker is developed and that is puc8 here that is it has a gene that is lac j gene which produce enzyme that is galactosidase and when in the presence of chromogenic substance it produces <laughs> blue color in case of PUC8 if we link a gene at this point here this is the recognition site that's a BAMH1 which is present in the lac J gene so here restriction enzyme acts and the and the foreign gene is linked at this point when the foreign gene is linked at this point what will happen it will become it will stop forming galactosidase when this transformants they are placed on the agar plate which contains ampicillin ampicillin and xgal this transformants they don't produce color here in case of pvr 322 what is our observation the observation is that here in one antibiotic resistance gene helps in selection of transformants whereas other antibiotic resistant gene gets inactivated due to insertion of alien dna and helps in selection of recombinant and in case of puc the presence of chromogenic substance substrate gives blue color colonies and inactivated inactivation of beta galactosidase and colonies don't produce any color so this helps in the identification of recombinant colonies i hope you must have understood what is vector and what are the essential features a vector should have to be a competent